Hey, what's going on guys? Coach Clayton with Upper Class Sports back here with another video for you. In today's video, I want to talk about pitch counts and the effects they can have on your arm. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. In the sport of baseball, what contributes to a young pitcher's arm pain? Now, there's a lot of different things that can contribute to arm pain. There's not just one thing that we can pinpoint, but one thing is for sure, arms at the youth level are being abused. And if you don't believe me, well, let's just go ahead and dive into this and you can kind of see what I'm talking about, about youth arms being abused. Now, this is a problem that we've been seeing for a long time, especially with the, the travel ball tournaments and the travel ball teams out there now, because we get to a, a weekend tournament and now it's all about winning, right? We want to win that ring or that trophy or whatever that is. And we want to make sure that we use the best players. And sometimes what that means is using up a, a youth pitcher, let's say a, a 12 year old, using a 12 year old pitcher multiple times in a weekend. Now we, we see that in the big leagues, right? We see that in the big leagues with relievers. And when we see that with relievers, we see with closers a lot, those guys are one inning guys. Now, We'll break down and go into the difference between a youth guy and a big league guy and why in the in the major leagues they pitch multiple days in a row and stuff like that. But at the youth level, it's ludicrous. It is ridiculous for a youth player to pitch back-to-back -back days. And I'm going to tell you why. So, like I said, we see youth guys being used like Madison Bumgarner in the 2014 World Series, right? Madison Bumgarner started a game and then came in in relief in the next game and he threw ridiculous amounts of innings that World Series, he ended up getting the World Series MVP and dominating, they won the World Series, right? Well, we see that with nine, 10, 11, 12 year olds happening in youth sports in a travel ball tournament in a weekend. And it's just crazy to me. And so we get a guy who comes out, they usually start their best guy on, on game one. You got game one, your starter comes out, he pitches four innings, five innings, right? He can't pitch more than that because if he wants to come back the next day, he has to stay under a certain pitch limit, right? But I wanna add this up, okay? So we've got the starter, right? The starter, he goes and he, he stretches, he plays catch. He probably throws, let's say he throws 25 throws. And then he goes to the bullpen where he probably throws another 20 pitches, right? Then he goes out for so the first inning, and at the beginning of every inning, or sorry, at the beginning of the first inning, he gets eight warm-up pitches. Then, let's say an average inning for a for a 12-year-old, we're probably talking between 12 to 15 pitches, right? So let's just let's go ahead and let's just say, let's just say on the low end, we'll say 12 pitches. Then he goes and he rests, he comes back out. Now, like I said, we're gonna go four innings here, right? Comes back out, he gets five warm-ups. Then, let's go average 12 pitches. Inning number two, five warm-ups again for the third inning. 12 pitches, right? And then we'll go another five and 12 for the fourth inning. So let's go ahead and add this up, right? We've got, we've got 116 throws here. Okay, for a youth guy, in four innings, that, that pitcher, that player is gonna do 116 throws. So is he done here? No, he's not, because if he's the ace of the staff, he's probably one of the best players on the team. So being one of the best players on the team, his day is not done. He's got the remainder two or three innings, depending on which age he's at, to go play the field, and then his day's not done because, as we all know, tournaments, we, it's a doubleheader on a Saturday, right? So his day's definitely not done. So he's at 160, 116 throws, and he's not even out of the first game. So fifth inning comes along, and now he's got to go play the field. Well, let's just go ahead and let's just say he's the shortstop, just for fun, right? So in between innings, he's going to get rolled a ground ball to be able to field his position and get used to the throw across the diamond, right? And to get his arm loosened up again, since he was just sitting on the bench for his team while they were hitting. So let's go ahead and say he does two to three throws, right? He does two to three throws over the next two, let's just say two innings, two X, right? So that's going to be four to six. So let's go ahead and add that to this. So we got four to six, let's take the low end. So we'll take four, right? So now that's not even counting balls hit to him in the game or balls hit to the outfield. Now he's the cutoff guy. He's got to go out and get the ball and then go ahead and throw it back to the pitcher 
or throw it to second base or make a high stress throw, right? So let's just say he does another two to three throws in the inning. And let's just go ahead and say 2x for the next two innings, right? So then that's another, we'll take the low end, another four. So he is at 124 pitches or 124 throws for that game. And like I said, it's a Saturday doubleheader tournaments. His day is not done. He's one of the best players on the team. So now, now let's go ahead and take this. Let's put our 124 up here, 124. That 124, 75, 80 of those throws are very high stress throws where he's maxing out, right? So that is, that's high stress for a, for a young guy. We're looking at a 12 year old here, right? So a 12 year old, that is high stress throws. Now, next game, he's gotta go warm up again. We had a game break, just two hours relaxing, got some food, right? Now he's gotta go out and get loose for the next game. And we know they don't just sit on the bench or, or DH him so that way he can rest his arm. No, he's gotta go play the field. He's one of the best players, right? So he goes out and plays shortstop, right? So he's gotta get loose again. Well, his arm's a little tender, so he's gonna go out and let's say he, he warms up and he only does 20 throws. Very minimal, but he does 20 throws. So he does 20 throws to warm up. Now he's loose. Like I said, it's about two to three throws for his warm up with every inning when he goes out there. So we're gonna say six, six innings. So we said we'll take the low end. So we're gonna go two warm up ground ball throws. And then let's go X, uh, six X, right? So this is gonna end up being 12 for the game if he plays six innings. Then, that, like I said, not counting balls hit to him in the game or a ball from the outfield, he's being the cutoff or whatever, or throwing the ball around on a strikeout. So let's say two to three throws, we'll take the low end. So that's another two. We'll go six X, right? Okay, so now his day is done, right? So for this, this is gonna be 12. So it's 24 plus 20, that's 44. So we're gonna add 44. Now let's go ahead and add up the day. Eight, six, 168 throws for the day. That's Saturday. Now here we go, coming back. Sunday, championship day, right? Now is where we need our ace, right? If we wanna make it to the championship, depending on how you did on Saturday, you might be playing two, three games on a Sunday. And now that's, that's telling all these pitchers, hey, we gotta bounce back. We gotta be able to throw again. Right? Off of, a, off of a Saturday where we threw roughly 168 throws for a 12 year old, right? So 168 throws for a 12 year old on Saturday, he's gotta bounce back on Sunday and now throw again. All right, so here we are, Sunday. Sunday, this is the games that matter, right? These are championship day. This is the day we get to go win our ring, right? So like we said, we already threw 168 pitches on Saturday, right? It's a lot. So let's go ahead and look at Sunday. Game one, we get there, we gotta warm up, right? He's not pitching the first game. So he goes and warms up, does about 25 throws, right? Then he goes as in-game totals over six, over six innings, right? About 24 throws total with the warm up ground balls getting about two to three and with the in-game action, who knows what could happen, throwing the ball around, getting it from the outfield or a ground ball right to him, we gotta make the throw, another eh, two to three, right? So we'll just go with 24 total over six innings. So that's game one, now we're, now we're at you know, 49 more throws. Let's go ahead and add that. So now we're at 217 total throws after three games, right? We're over the 200 mark now. Right, now we go to game two. Oh, we've got to have you pitch this game. Now, the youth, he, he may only be able to go about two innings, but we don't know, right? So he's gonna go ahead and do no warm-ups, right? He's not gonna go do any warm-ups because we're playing back to back, okay? So now no warm-up throws because he's just fresh off of a game where he's already thrown, so he's just gonna go straight to the bullpen where he's gonna do 15 to 20 throws, right, to warm up. So let's go low end, right, we'll take 15. So let's add 15. So now he's at 232 throws, right? He's gonna get his eight warm up pitches, so now we're at 240 throws, right? And then we're gonna go another 15. So now he's at 255 throws, 
after the first inning. Now, I can keep going, but 255 throws in a weekend, even if that's just one inning pitch, that is ridiculous. Okay, we're talking about a 12-year-old here. 255 throws Saturday and Sunday combined, and that's, that's minimum. Like, this is minimal, right? We could be going more. Because we never know, disaster innings, like 15 pitches, that's an average inning, but some guys go 20, 25 pitches. I've seen it happen, right? And then they go four or five innings and they've gone 20 pitches in three of them. You just never know, right? And of course it could be less, but so we're taking the averages here, right? We're taking the low end averages and we're at 255 throws in a weekend. And now if he had to play a game three, who even knows where he'd be in his amount of throws? We'd be pushing 300 throws for that youth player's arm. Now look, these numbers are staggering, right? They are crazy. We don't actually think about that because what do we always do? We go to the player as parents or as coaches, we say, hey, how does your arm feel? And those kids are always gonna say, I feel great, I wanna go. It is not on the kids and we need to take it off of the kids and say, no, as an adult, we are abusing this kid. We cannot do this anymore, right? So we need to stop saying, hey, how do you feel? And just take the facts and say, look, that's a lot of throws on a youth player to make. You're not throwing anymore. You're not gonna pitch on Sunday. Something, something great, this is, this is amazing. Dave Roberts pulled his rookie starting pitcher at seven and a third innings while he was throwing a no hitter. He's throwing a no-hitter and he pulls him. Why? Well, because he said, our, he's a rookie. Ross, Ross Stripling is his name. He, he, comes, he came up to the big leagues. We called him up and we said, look, he's going to throw 100 pitches. That's it. He got to seven and a third innings. He hit that 100 pitch mark and they, Dave went out and he went and pulled him. Okay? He says this quote. He said, we made that decision before the game. In the spring, he had thrown 78 pitches. So 100 pitches was our number. I want to keep his future and health in mind. Now listen to that. I want to keep his future and his health in mind. Now my question to you is, are your coaches keeping your future and health in mind when they're letting you go and throw 255 throws in a weekend? majority of those throws being high stress throws or are they taking your future in mind and going look you're pitching saturday and that's it you're not stepping on the mound again 255 throws for a child that is ridiculous listen to these numbers a study from mlb's pitch smart technologies shows that over 50 percent of tommy john surgeries happen with players from the ages 15 to 19. that is ridiculous that means these kids are blowing out their arms early in their high school career or early in their college career. 50%. That is crazy. How do those numbers get that high? Well, because we've got coaches who don't care. We've got coaches who do not give a crap about you. They care about their status, their accolades, how many, how many tournaments they want so that way they can go get more kids to join their program and they just don't care about the individual, they care about themselves and that is selfish. And it absolutely ticks me off because I'm seeing kids get abused and when you see numbers like 50% of Tommy John surgeries or are on kids who are ages 15 to 19, that is ridiculous. So it is on the parents. It is on your parents, it is on you as a parent to say, no, my son is not going to get abused. That I'm not going to allow my son to fall victim to a coach who does not care about his health and just wants to go win a trophy so that way he can have another plaque on his wall that's made of plastic. It's crazy to me. It is absolutely crazy to me. Dr. Steven Nicholas with Sports Medicine New York Orthopedics says, there are countless guys who have the surgery and do not come back. So my question to you, you're 9, 10, 11, 12, right? You're getting abused 255 pitches in a tournament. Is that worth it to you to have your career possibly be over at age 15 to 19? Not even get your shot to fulfill your dream of potentially playing in the big leagues one day because we let a coach for a travel ball team or a little league team 
allow us to throw that many pitches or that many throws in a weekend? Is it worth it? That's the question we have to ask ourselves is, is it worth it? Is that little ring that is going to go inside of a drawer or potentially go into the trash later on in life that's not going to matter? I can tell you how many tournaments I played in that we won the tournament and I got rings. I don't even know where a single one is because it doesn't matter. What mattered to me is being able to play in the longevity of my career, being able to play and fulfill my dreams of playing professional baseball. I didn't make it to the big leagues. I didn't even get drafted. But I got to go play professionally. I got to go go get paid to play this game and travel the world playing baseball and doing what I love. That was my dream. My dream was to play professional baseball. And I got to do that. I got to live it. So now for you to be able to live out your dream, are you going to allow that to continue to happen? Answer that question. Joe Manuel said this. He's an MLB analyst. He said, we need to stop asking boys to do men's job. We cannot have a 12-year-old or ask a 12-year-old to carry the burden that Madison Baumgartner had to carry in the World Series and pitching as much as he did, right? We, can, we need to stop asking 9, 10, 11, 12-year-olds to do a man's job, right? These guys, these kids, they're, they're kids. Their bodies are still developing. They're not even developed yet right? They still got their muscles, joints, tendons, all that growing. And we are trying to put a stop to that by putting so much on them and adding to their workload when they're 12 year old kids, right? We're not talking about 30 year old men who are fully developed, who can now do that. A 30 year old man could do 255 pitches in two days or throws in two days and be, be fine, right? Recover and be fine, right? But to have kids do that, that is damaging. And that is just terrible on our part. And we need to make sure that we are advocating for these kids and making sure that these kids are taken care of. So that way we don't make them another statistic in that 50% of kids ages 15 to 19 get Tommy John surgery. So all I've got to say is parents, coaches, please stop. Stop abusing these kids for your game. It's not for these kids game, right? It is our job to say no, to say no, I am not gonna let you be abused. I am not going to abuse your arm. It's on us. It is on us as adults to be able to make the right decision for these kids. So there it is guys. I this is something I am super passionate about. I am super passionate about arm care and, and I'm an arm advocate for the youth because I see it all the time, youth players being abused and I can't stand it. It is not about now, it is about the future, right? We want them to be able to have long careers and make it and continue to go on, get scholarships to college, potentially get drafted, be able to fulfill their childhood dreams, right? Because right now they're dreams, but their their goal is to make them a reality. And in order for them to do that, we need to make sure that their their body is healthy enough and strong enough to be able to continue on the journey. Because this is a journey. It is a journey playing this game, and it takes a long time. And so we need to be able to have the arm be healthy and the body be healthy over a long period of time in order for that for these players to be able to fulfill their goals. If you guys found this video helpful, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and share this video. Share this video with people who you think need to hear this because this is something that is not talked about enough. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you learned anything new from this video. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications so that we're notified every single time we drop a video. Thanks guys and we'll see you real soon.